All right, what we see here in Acts chapter number 4 is the disciples facing a lot of opposition to their preaching of the gospel. And you read all throughout the book of Acts, there is the, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and, the, and the, the rulers, the chief rulers. They hated the fact that they were preaching about Jesus. They faced all kinds of opposition when they were preaching the gospel. Now we see here in verse number 3, it says, And they laid hands on them and put them in hold unto the next day, for it's now eventide. Basically, because of their preaching, what that means is that they were put into prison. When it says they laid hands on them and they were put in hold, they put them into prison. But look at verse number 4. Howbeit many of them which heard the word believed, and the number of the men was about 5,000. So here they are. They're out preaching the gospel. They're out preaching about Jesus Christ and the resurrection. And they're facing great opposition to the point to where they're being thrown into jail. I mean, people, there's a lot of people out there that are really hating what they're doing and hating on them and, and, and condemning them and telling them, you need to stop, you need to shut up, you can't preach Jesus Christ. And in the midst of all of that, look at the great success that they had. 5,000, I mean, think about 5,000 souls being saved as a result of their preaching just in a very short period of time right here. Why did they have such great success? Why did they have such great success in such opposition? In the face of so many people hating them and trying to sway public opinion and people being real vocal and loud about them not being able to preach the name of Jesus and, and, and condemning it and trying to get everybody else in their culture and in their society turned against them. Why did they have such great success? Well, there's a common theme in this chapter of the boldness that they had. And I believe that's one of the main reasons why they had such great success is because they didn't shut up. They didn't fear. They didn't let them be silenced at the voice of the opposition. Look at verse number 8. We'll run through some of these verses, a highlight of, of, the, of the theme of this chapter. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Ghost, said unto them, Ye rulers of the people and elders of Israel, if we, be, if we this day be examined, and he goes on and on explaining, he says, Look, Peter was filled with the Holy Ghost. And he's answering rulers. Remind you, Peter is standing in front of the rulers. Now, a lot of people wouldn't have this type of boldness when faced by authority. Right? You're standing. You know, he just got arrested. He had to spend the night in jail. Try to put yourself in his shoes. You get, you're out soul winning. You get arrested. And now you're sitting. You spend a night in jail. It gives you some time to think. Right? It really gives you some time alone. It's like, man, maybe people will be questioning themselves. Was I doing the right thing? I don't know, man. I really don't want to be here. I want to get back to my family. I want to get back to just being normal. And when he's let out, he faces the rulers. And instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, you know, I'll try to follow the rules next time. Or, you know, I won't, I won't be as vocal about it. What does he say? He says, if this day, if we this day be examined of the good deeds done to the impotent man by what means he has made hold, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. He knew the reason why they got arrested is because they were preaching the name of Jesus. And what does he do? He doubles down. And he says, you know what? You guys were the ones that crucified him. You're the ones that have blood on your hands. You're the wicked people. I'm going to preach Jesus Christ because that's where the power lies. And he did not let them shake his faith or his boldness one bit. Look at verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men, they marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus. They, I mean, it's apparent to everybody the boldness that they have, that they're not afraid to say what needs to be said. Verse number 29, or excuse me, 19, verse 19, we keep going on here, verse 19. But Peter and John answered and said unto them, Whether it be right in the sight of God to hearken unto you more than unto God, judge ye, for we cannot but speak the things which we have seen and heard. Again, demonstrating the boldness, saying we're not going to back down. We're not going to stop preaching the word of God. Verse 29. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings, and grant unto thy servants that with all boldness they may speak thy word. They're praying unto God for even more boldness than they had. Look at verse 31. And when they had prayed... The place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and they spake the word of God with boldness. So right after their prayer, immediately following their prayer, praying to God, God, 
You know, you see what they're doing. They're threatening us. They're, they're beating us. They're throwing us in jail. God, give us even more boldness. And what does he do? The place is shaken where they're at. And they're all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they're all going out and preaching Jesus Christ. Verse 33 says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. I don't know about you, but I've been sick recently of, of just modern Christianity is just completely lacking any power. And the reason why that so many churches are lacking the power of Christ is because they don't have any boldness. They don't have any guts to go out and preach the word. When they're confronted by someone who's going to tell them, you can't be preaching at all, oh, that's hate speech or whatever, they, what do they do? They back down. They'll apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, we need to find a more sensitive way of preaching the truth. No, we don't. No, we don't. We need to preach the word of God and stand on it. And you know what? There's going to be people that hate it. It's going to happen. But you can't let them push you down and, and push you to the side. You need to maintain the boldness just like the disciples had. Now let's get real practical here and, and, and apply the boldness that you need today specifically to, to, to a specific example and think about when you go soul winning. And notice I didn't say if you go soul winning. When you go soul winning. It's every, every believer's responsibility to go out and preach the word of God, to preach the, the gospel of Jesus Christ to every creature. When you go out soul winning, how do you approach the door? Do you fear if someone's actually going to open the door? Do you hope that no one's there? Do you, do you approach the door and think, oh man, this, well, this person's not going to get saved anyways, or he doesn't want to hear it. And you know, you got to watch out for this. And even seasoned soul owners, you got to watch out for this and don't let the fear take over and maintain the boldness of God. Because you don't want to walk up to a door and just kind of already be defeated before you even get into the gospel. And this happens, I've seen it happen, and I've heard it, and this might be a little bit extreme, but just think about if you walked up and say, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't really want to hear about the gospel would you and you're like ready to turn around and walk away the minute you just you get up to the door and they answer the door that's not having boldness and that's not doing your job appropriately either because when we're going and you got to get this in your head when we're going out and, and, and knocking on doors and preaching the gospel to people I mean what do you what are you doing it for it's because you believe in the message right? you believe hey there's this great free gift of salvation that Christ has got has given or is bought and paid for and all you have to do is receive it and it's great news. We're preaching good news. And you need to keep that in your mind when you go and knock on these doors that you don't need to be afraid of anything. You don't need to be afraid, well, what if they slam the door in my face? Or what if they, you know, what if they yell at me? What if they say something? You know, what if they get offended because I'm there? It doesn't matter. The whole point is that you're there to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know, sometimes you might run into people that'll tell you, and I've had this happen to me, they say, oh, don't, you know, don't go knock on their door. No, you know, you need to get out of here. Don't back down. Be like the disciples, and that's how we're going to get the power of God. And look at the great success that they had. I mean, 5,000 in one day. <clears throat> There's no reason to be embarrassed or ashamed of the gospel either. Don't feel like what you're doing is, is putting people off. You know, and just getting scared when you're talking to people at the door. The Bible says for, in Romans 1, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of, of God, of Christ, excuse me, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. The gospel is power. The gospel is a power of salvation to save a sinner, to save a soul from going to hell. And we need to recognize that. Now, more than ever in this day, we need boldness. There's too many people that have, that have forsaken the right way and that have, that have shut their mouths at the, at the first instance of, of any type of opposition. And in, America, in the United States today, we've got it so good and so easy as opposed to so many places all throughout history that have had to deal with so much more. I mean, even the disciples. Who here has been thrown in prison because they've gone out soul winning and they're preaching the gospel? I don't see anybody. Now, I'm not going to ask for a show of hands, but how many people here are actually going out and knocking on doors and preaching the gospel? There's probably a lot, but if you're not doing that, think about it. I mean, they were doing this in the, in the face of, of being thro under threat of being put into jail, being beaten, and, and even worse. And we see later on the disciples are martyred, many of them, for the cause of Jesus Christ. But that didn't stop them. They had boldness, and that's one of the reasons why they had such great success. Now, 
as I said, more than ever, we need to have boldness because our society is, is changing quickly. And the reason why is because not enough, not enough men of God have the boldness to say what's right and to say what needs to be said. There's a very vocal group of wicked people that hate God that are trying to change everything about our society, everything about the culture. These sodomites that are, that are just perverting everything because they hate God and they're real loud. And the problem is no one's standing up and saying no. That's wicked. That's, you know, garbage. We're not going to stand for it. You can't be scared as a Christian. You need to get the boldness from God. Now, um, what we see in the book of Acts, and this is, one, this is my favorite book of the whole Bible. And what I love so much about the book of Acts is that they're turning the world upside down with their doctrine. I mean, they're actually going out and doing things. It's acts. It's action. Right? That's what the Christian life is supposed to be about. It's supposed to be a life of action. Man. It's not just to... to Go to a service, talk to your friends, go home, and just be real happy about what a great Christian you are. It's a, it's a life of action. You need to take the Word of God and get out there and, and impact as many people as possible. You need to be preaching the gospel. Not only preaching the gospel, you need to be praying for those people, working on them, talking to them, keeping up with them, and trying to get them in church and make disciples of people. And going out and doing and living and not being some hypocrite either. The disciples were able to turn the world upside down with their, with their boldness. And they saw great success. Now, I believe in, in this movement that we're a part of, we're starting to see some good success. We are. There's a, there's, a lot, there's a lot of excitement. There's a lot of motivation. You see people now online there's, there's the, with the small town soul winning efforts and these other things are bringing people together and a lot more Christians are starting to get more zealous for serving God and praise the Lord. Amen. But you know what? It takes a lot more than even just a few people to really turn the world upside down. Do you have a vision of turning the world upside down? I mean, do you want to just make sure that everybody knows that if nobody has an excuse that if they've at least heard the gospel of Christ and it's up to them. And if you have that vision, then you need to get active. You need to start doing more. You need to start getting off of your, of your comfortable surrounding. And look, doing action and doing this over Christ, do you think it was comfortable sitting in a jail cell overnight? It's not comfortable. It's not the easy way. The easy way is to go home, go to bed, wake up, go to work, do your same old routine, and not end up doing anything. It takes a lot of action, but we need more than just a few people doing this. It's great to get excited over those few people doing it, but you need to get involved too. Look, there's nothing particularly special about any one individual. The Bible talks about Elijah as being, he was a like man just as we are. But the Bible says when he prayed unto God that it you know, didn't rain, it didn't rain for three and a half years. He prayed again and it rained. He's saying, look, he was a like man. He had the same temptations that we have. He was just like you or I. He's just, an, just a person, just a man. But he did great things for God. And anybody that does great things for God, look, we're all just people. We're all subject to, to the, the lust of the flesh. We're, but how do you deal with that? You need to get the boldness, first and foremost, to get started and get out and do this work. Think about how um, everything in the day, think about in the time of Jesus Christ, right? Right before his ministry started. From what we gather from Scripture, everything was kind of run in status quo, right? Not, not too much being shaken up. Not just, you know, a lot of false doctrine and false religion. The Judeo religion has, had gotten really perverted. And it starts, we see, with John the Baptist as a voice crying in the wilderness, right? He starts preaching, doing a hard preaching and baptizing out in the wilderness and kind of making a stir. And people are saying, wow, what's going on over here? What's going on with John the Baptist? But it didn't end with him, obviously. Then it grew. You have Jesus Christ and his disciples going out and preaching the word. And then it got to the point to where you have, you know, over 70 disciples and then over 500. And then that's where it gets a point where it needs to snowball. So you need to get more people to start getting then finally these results of the 5,000. Don't be discouraged when, at first of all, you might just be following that John the Baptist in the wilderness. And it seems like no one's really paying attention. There's not a whole lot going. I think we're past that stage where we are right now in our country. I think there's, there's been um, 
you know, Pastor Anderson's done a great job of, of inspiring people and, and, and stirring up the Holy Spirit with inside believers to start doing a work for God. And there's a lot of people now that are getting zealous. Don't lose that zeal, but with the zeal, you need to have boldness. It's great to be excited about the things of God, but take it a step further and don't shy away. Don't be ashamed. Be able to speak your mind and preach the gospel. And if you've never gone out soul winning before, you need to do it. You need to get started. You need to make the decision. Make the decision at night. Hey, I'm going to go out and do it next, next week, next Sunday, this Sunday, when, when there's a soul winning after, whenever the time is, I'm going to be there. I'm going to go. You might not have the boldness right now. And look, if you're in that situation, because I believe every new believer, pretty much, at least as far as I know, that gets started off and starts being active for God, you don't start off with all the boldness in the world. You're not just like Mr. Complete Bold, willing to, to, to say anything to anybody. It's going to have to be built up a long time. So don't feel bad where you're at. If you're just getting started in this, but you need to at least feel bad enough to to want to progress and move forward. You need to have a little bit of godly sorrow to say, you know what? Because look, I've been there, and I'm sure many other people have. Where I have walked up to the door and hope nobody answered the door. I have been in that position where, you know, I I, I start to feel like uh, I don't I don't think this person's going to listen to me at all, and, and you start to shy away and and just turn back around. We need to have boldness. You're not going to get success that way when you're afraid to, to, of your own shadow. right? And you're definitely not filled with the Holy Spirit if you're afraid of your own shadow. So the Bible says that when you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to preach boldly. That's what it said here in verse number 31. It says that when they prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spake the Word of God with boldness. When you're filled with the Holy Ghost, you're going to be able to preach the Word of God with boldness. So you need to make sure one great way to, to get filled with boldness is to be praying. Pray every day for God. You say, if you don't feel like I'm very bold when, when I go out and I, or if I've never even gone preaching the gospel, or when you go, you're still kind of scared, you're still kind of nervous, preach the word of God, or ask God, pray to him, go to him in prayer and ask for that boldness, and he'll hear you and he'll answer. That's definitely something that's according to the will of God. He will hear that prayer and he will answer that prayer. But you need to be faithful of offering yourself up a living sacrifice to be able to go out and do those things and start taking action. Let's not just talk about revival. It's another thing I've heard in so many churches I've been to. You know, there's always this, pray for revival, pray for revival, pray for revival. But what do they do? Nothing. I've sat in churches where they're saying, we need to pray for a great revival, and they don't even have a soul winning time. Garbage. They have no way of going out and bringing the gospel to the lost. They're saying, well, we just need a revival. Yeah. Pray for our leaders. Pray for the politicians. Yo, nonsense. We need to go out there. We need to be the revival. Amen. We need to go out and bring the gospel of Christ to the lost and get involved. Amen. Pray for revival, sure, but make sure that you're doing your part to make sure it comes. None of it's going to happen without the power and the boldness from the Holy Ghost. Let's pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the people that are gathered here together, dear Lord, for the, the brethren here that, that do love you and that do want to serve you. And um, we pray tonight that you'd give us all more boldness, dear Lord. There is more and more mounting adversity to the things of God and the things of, of your word, dear Lord. Will we pray that you would please help us to never shy away or back down, but that we would be filled with the Holy Ghost and with all boldness would preach your word, dear Lord. In Jesus' name we pray these things. Amen.